people, welcome back to Straight From The Kettle, this is Dan speaking. Today I am going to be talking about a documentary that I came across on the internet, which it's um it's in, it's incomplete, they didn't get to finish it because one of the, um, the filmmakers who was contributing towards this documentary was murdered. Um, it's alleged that it's suicide, but honestly I feel like uh, it was he was murdered. The documentary is called The Silent Children. It will be a long-form documentary film with compelling and of an original point of view, drawing upon the unique talents and experience of its filmmaker. It will take the viewer deep into a world that exposes the truth of child exploitation and human trafficking. In keeping with the great tradition of hard-hitting investigative film journalism and through privileged access, the film will follow several never-before-seen scenarios. Okay? So, the reformer working on this documentary called The Silent Children, the project initially founded by um, Leroy Moore uh, from the Dave Matthews Band and his fiancée Lisa Bean was cancelled after Cornell's death, right? It was rumored that Cornell was interviewing people about abuses that took place by people in his inner circle, such as David Geffen, seen here with known assets, of course, that could not stand. So he's going around and there's pictures of uh, Hillary, Michael, and David Geffen, of course, um, as he was carrying out this documentary. And I, I guess, you know, they didn't want the secrets out there, so they, they, had, to, they had to put him in a coffin, literally, right? Uh, Bennington Potter Jr. and his band Lincoln Park were given a million dollar grant by the Clinton Foundation to open SRS, a recycling plant, guess where, in Haiti, right? That's right, Haiti. Chester knew about the abuses being commu- committed against the Haitian people. There was a lot of kids getting taken away from Haiti. Haiti is a known spot for Clinton Foundation and their cronies to go when they want kids to do organ um, organ harvesting or just to sexually exploit minors and that's just crazy well how does how does this all tie together with now I'm going to show you guys something this ties together with the um the recent um incarceration of Jelaine Maxwell and the departure of Jeffrey Epstein right Means masks have been removed from from um. It means the mask have been, has been removed from the pedo island, but Epstein's crimes are just one of many. The cult of Satan is very much in control of the Caribbean. Epstein, Jelaine, the Silent Children, Clinton. Do you see how like this? This is a big web, right? The spider web goes very deep, or the, or they would say the rabbit hole goes very deep. Um, many pedos went to Jeffrey Epstein Island as we are seeing now um, the prince of England right Queen Elizabeth's son uh-huh. they they used to go there by boats yachts right and God knows what, 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 what went on there but I just wanted to bring this to you guys attention I'm gonna be playing the um the clip that they released it's out there but they didn't get to finish it because they didn't want the cat coming out of the bag but this but the funny thing is this was done less than a decade about nine actually let's just say a decade 10 years ago 10 years ago and you see how god works in mysterious ways anything done in the dark must come to light especially if you are harming kids that will never stay a secret forever so these demons i would like to call them cockroaches because when the light turns on they all scatter right they like to operate in the dark in the shadows yep yeah, it's it's not a nice thing man this is it's very scary to 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 see who is in charge of our world and um there's pictures too with oprah right and um there's this guy, um, Roman Abramovich. He's the owner of Chelsea Football Club. And when you guys hear the name Abramovich, you know, Podesta, um, Marina Abramovich from the Marina Institute, Jay-Z, all these people. Everybody linked in, man. This, this web goes very deep. But this documentary, I had to share it with you guys. So 
just check it out share your comments in the comment section and let me know what you think about this thank you peace what hello <laughs> you want to watch chaos watch this My name's Paul Myhill. Ever since I was a young man, I've, I've been a world traveler. As a kid, I was a fast tracker, uh, plunged headfirst into entrepreneurial ventures. With all the success, I was losing a sense of significance, my place in the world. My first real taste of suffering children uh, came on a, a visit to U Uganda in the 90s. A little girl named Peace, uh, two years old, as fragile as, as balsa wood, was suffering from malaria, had lost her parents to AIDS. My wife and I took turns holding this little girl, wiping her brow, only to learn a couple of weeks later after returning to the United States that she didn't make it. And uh, that little girl has left a lasting impression upon me. A person like Little Peace should not have to die simply because she is born in the wrong quadrant of this globe while we sit idly by chasing our toys much like I used to do. There's a fair amount of places around the world where we put ourselves in a fair amount of risk. But our compassion for the children and asking the question, well, if not me, who? Who is going to stand in the gap and, and reach out to be an aid for these children? We're in Chisinau, Moldova right now, the 10th poorest nation in the world and the, certainly the most impoverished nation in all of Europe. For most people in the United States have never even heard of it. Moldova, known as the trafficking hub of this part of the world, population of a little over 4 million, and by some statistics, 400,000 of its people have been trafficked out. This is the area where one of the head guys involved in human trafficking lives here, and nobody, police doesn't come this place. Okay. Just be careful, the yeah. big cameras are on both sides of the house and they see us. Be careful. Yeah. Those guys are watching. It's a very criminal, known criminal area. If you come with a car and you're trying to run away from here, this is the only way. No way to get out of here. If you know so much, these guys would love, but they would want, they want to kill you. Yeah. Because you know the names, you know a lot of stuff. That's why I call these girls. Girls that are really released from human trafficking. They are like submarines. They go deep and they yeah. don't say anybody anything yeah. if they want to stay alive. Those guys are living close to this railroad and are having girls transported. Transported from this area. Connects Moldova to Romania, to Ukraine, and to the port in Ukraine on Odessa. We're standing in one of Istanbul's port areas. Girls from Ukraine, Romania, Moldova, Transnistria are shipped to Turkey into the sex trade here, either as a, a destination point or as a transit point. The girls are actually put onto containers. And if you can imagine having a 32 hour plus ride in a, in a container to then be let out and to then suffer the exploitation that occurs afterwards. The Turkish Mafia basically rented a whole hotel, took these girls to this hotel, impregnated them, and the babies were then taken to have their or organs harvested. Can you imagine the depth of depravity that it takes to, to take a, a, a 
poor child in an orphanage who's already lost their parents or already been abandoned, to then take them to a place of being raped, to then see that same child bear a child and fi maybe finally feeling like, gosh, I've accomplished something. I I've, he here's offspring you know, of, of my womb to only then have that child ripped away to be harvested when you've got rich people and the, the Emirates and Turkey and, and other countries of affluence and, and they've got a dying child. They don't care about the, the child in a poor developing world. All they care about is they want to save the life of their child. They don't care how that heart, how that liver, how that kidney comes. All they care about is their child. And there's men who are willing to facilitate that. It's warped. No one is immune. Women, children, boys, Southeast Asia, Indian subcontinent, Latin America, Eastern Europe. There is nobody that is immune and out of the grip of this evil. So we're in uh, Pattaya, Thailand, a uh, area known for the uh, sex tourism industry. A lot of people come here actually on a, an official sex tour. You can see one of the tour buses. Now he's got his hand on bare skin. It doesn't get more of them in this. Hold on, this guy in the suspenders. Yeah. As we've walked this street here, it feels like a carnival atmosphere. What can only be described as a, a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh yeah. Too young. Too young. It's 5 a.m. in Patpong, one of Bangkok's prostitution districts. Uh, this bar beside me here has a, a rather offensive name, but the truth is that everything that goes on on this street and many like it in Bangkok is truly offensive. There's 50 girls at yeah, yeah, 6 yeah. in the morning? Yes, sir. But now happy hour. Happy hour to put No photo, no photo. Well, don't have the door open. Hey! One of the things that, that really gets to me personally is uh, a lot of these girls have numbers pinned to their chest where a client would then pick out a girl by, by a number. They don't have a name, they don't have a history, they don't have a family. They're simply a number. They're, they're a piece of meat uh, to be put on display and uh, chosen for butchering. It's a little after uh, 7 in the morning and uh, the girls are still working out on the streets. It's a little early to be working this morning, isn't it? Yeah, because in the night time the police are catching In the night time the police are snatching the girls? Touching. Oh, touching. They abuse the girls. So you like to work the daytime to avoid the police. Just across the border in northern Thailand, actually in Burma, and the sign behind me pretty much says it all. An exhortation to not sell your children, to not see your children be placed into domestic servitude, to, to beat and abuse them, and to also see them in a situation of child prostitution, or sexual slavery. Imagine being sold into slavery for $10. My mother sold me for about 300 baht back in the house, about 10 bucks. The scars run deep, and it takes a loving home to be able to help mend some of those wounds. In a lot of these countries we work in, these kids graduate or age out of these institutional orphanages, often corrupt institutional orphanages, where even the directors will call the traffickers and let them know when certain kids are being released. I'm now involved in a campaign, Traffic Jam. They're seeking to unite musicians and their fans to jam up child trafficking around the world while also jamming to, to make a difference.
We've got a, a lot of artists that have given us signed instruments as part of this Instruments of Change program. I've got a, a beautiful guitar here that was donated to us by Dave Matthews. He signed it and he's, he's put some pretty incredible artwork in, on it here because he believes in this cause and he believes that this instrument can be an instrument of change. Just a stroke of a pen can break the chains of slavery for a child. Hello. Hello. Wow, hi. There's few things on this planet that elicit you know, such a passionate response in people than you know, the, the music they identify with and, and the causes they identify with. And to marry those together, there's power in that.